like Jesus, tryna run two million up like Pete. That is something that does come up all the time. They like to, you know, say that maybe there was drugs involved or stuff like that. I really don't like to talk about that portion of, you know, uh, Derek's life, not just yet. 18, we're making beats since I was 13. Had it not been for his untimely death at just 19 years old, Speaker Knockers would be one of the biggest producers and rappers of today's time. Born Derek McAllister Jr., November 6, 1994, Speaker Knockers was professionally known as an American rapper and a producer from Columbia, South Carolina. He was known for his independent tracks, which would gain traction on video sharing platforms like YouTube. Some of his biggest tracks include Dap You Up and Lonely. Now he was described by Double XL as a front runner in the melodically driven state of modern rap. And he has been cited as an influence by numerous rappers. Earlier on, Speaker Knockers would spend his first years of his life in New York City. His father, Derek McAllister Sr. was sentenced to 10 years in prison, causing him to be away from the family. All the while, the family would live in the concrete jungle that us Americans called New York City. Now, with his father's imprisonment, Speaker Knocker's mother would ultimately decide to migrate her family. He had ultimately made the decision to migrate to Columbia, South Carolina, in order to avoid an unhealthy environment for her children. So, it was during this time in South Carolina that her aspiring rapper son developed a passion for hip hop music and its creation. And in 2010, his father came back home after he completed his sentence. Being a musician himself, Derek McAllister Sr. would be able to assist his son with the creation of his first mixtape, Flight Delayed. And at the very moment when the production was finished, a star was born. And I started getting serious until, you know, I got older and I had the money when I was it was like a struggle, so I had to figure out some way to make it. I was like, hey, right on, take my talents. Make the money. At the tender age of 13, when most kids were writing their first love letters, possibly even still trading Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon cards, young speaker knockers would start using a beat maker program, Fruity Loops, after seeing a video of American rapper Soulja Boy doing the exact same thing. At around 2010 and 2011, would you believe the Speaker Knockers would actually make his first sale when it came down to the music industry? He sold his first instrumental to a Miami rapper for $50, and he had used that money to buy himself an affordable pair of shoes. Mark kid, gotta admit, the kids got some sand. Now, before even being out there as a rapper, as a producer, Speaker Knockers had produced for rappers like Gucci Mane and Flair, Young Scooter, French Montana, and Shy Glizzy. In the spring of 2012, he began rapping under his current moniker as a means of promotion for his own record production. Say, man, talk about a head of the curve. This boy started rapping in endeavors to sell his beats. Bravo, young man, bravo. Now, in the year 2013, when everybody was going Chief Keef crazy, he would release two official mixtapes, Married to the money. Every day I think about the money. Let's go. What am I gonna do with all this money? And finesse father. He would also release his first music video, Money, produced by his friend, Loud Visuals. I can't go a day without my money. No, you know that I'm married to the money. In September of 2013, he released a music video to his track, Rico Story Part One. Pulled up to the bank, he parked on the side. He got out the car, she said, I'll stay inside. In December of 2013, he released his track, Lonely, alongside an accompanying music video. In the year 2013, you were still able to get a deuce of activists for $150. The brand and posting of choice for modern day rappers at that time. Something that Speaker Knockers indulged in himself. But it would actually be the song, Lonely, 
that had gained him mainstream attention as people would start to promote his music on social media platforms like Vine. And he would end up buying a black Chevy Camaro at just the tender age of 19 years old. But this wouldn't come on accident, of course, because it is a fact that Speaker Knockers is one of the pioneers of the melodic sound that we hear today, a sound that is enraptured by the sounds of recent wave Chicago artists. The Speaker Knocker sound had a melodic, carefully crafted feel, while their approach was something of a street edge to his approach relative to influences like Lil Durk. It was a certain optimism about Speaker Knocker's overall sound in the company with the purple potion that they call activists. His songs were like adult lullabies in an extremely good way. Think of it like a future meets Chief Keef meets Young Scooter, but it would predate all of those sounds. This sound that I so eloquently described can be best summed up in his music video, Dap You Up, where he's seen holding the kel Tech 9mm rifle and drinking purple potion out of a styrofoam Coca-Cola cup. In fact, although Lonely was his breakthrough track, it would be Dap You Up that had put me on to speaker knockers. Yes, Dap You Up would serve as the soundtrack for Summer Circa 2014. Overall, speaker knockers sound would shed the hard shell of Drill's aesthetic, focusing his energies on two contrasting moods, a bubbly and a euphoric enthusiasm and a deep meditative state type of sound. The rise of artist Speaker Knocker was 100% for sure. He had exactly what it took to be the next big thing. I mean, he was a triple threat. He could produce his own music, he could rap, and he can be melodic. And as I stated previously, he would serve as the blueprint or prototype for the rappers that would come in the future. No pun intended. This was a big feat. Being a kid from Columbia, South Carolina, and one of the first young kids fresh out of high school to have a big wave like this, it was looking like the sky was the limit for speaker knockers. Now, while it may be true that his overall aesthetic had reminiscent of Chicago drill, he was in the fortunate position to not have to reciprocate negative energy that came along with rapping about killing your ops. A lot of music that you can just ride around to, and on the occasion, turn up. Speaker knockers would come before the streaming era. Well, at least the one that we know today, with DSPs, TuneCore, and DistroKid. He would self-enlist his music for sale on Apple iTunes Store. So not only was he talented with rapping, being melodic, and a producer, but he was business savvy as well. So it was looking like the sky was the limit for the young Columbia, South Carolina rapper. But as we already know, unfortunately, all things must come to an end at some point. And that's what we're here to talk about today. What's the deal, YouTube family? We're Chris McLean, Cliff of Cliff World TV. And today, we are finna go ahead and go over the last moments and discuss the events that unfolded leading up to the untimely demise of Derek McAllister Jr., AKA Speaker Knockers. On February the 26th of the new year of 2014, Miss Misha Wilson, Speaker Knockers' mother, would take to Facebook that morning and she would ask her people to please say a prayer for her son. You would go on to read that Speaker Knockers, AKA Derek McAllister, 19 years old. We are trying to find him. He was last seen 3-14-2014, 11 p.m. in a black Camaro, 2013. It's not like him to not communicate to me or come home for a long period of time or show up for his music meetings and sessions. I pray that my son is okay. If anybody see them, please contact them. The strange part about this is that the day that he went missing was on his father's birthday. The day he went missing was actually on his father's birthday. Derek McAllister Sr. Last conversation that he would have with his mother would be that he wanted to start companies in his own name. At this point, he was a grown man and she was just simply directing her son as to what business decisions to make. But this was a phone call. This wasn't in person. And like I stated, it was his father's birthday, so he was taking him out to celebrate. Young speaker knockers would hang the phone up with his mother after telling him he loves her. And then he would proceed to go to dinner with his father, Derek McAllister Sr., and his brother. Nothing strange there at all, but it would be the last time 
that she would speak with her son. And honestly, that's not rare. I don't talk to my mama every single day, but I do make sure to call her every Sunday. Mama, if you're listening, if I don't call on a Sunday, call me or send help. After dinner, Speaker Knockers would then drop his brother off and his father off and then he would go about his merry way. But it would be the hours and days between this time where things would get confusing and a bit murky, to be honest. Speaker Knockers father, Derek McAllister Sr. will call his mother, Misha Wilson, and ask her if she's heard from him. That his, I think his dad called me that morning and he asked me, did I hear from Derek? So I said, no, he said, because he left something here or something like that, it's so long ago. Because he had left some belongings over there that he was trying to get to him. Derek Sr. would inform Misha that he knows his son and there's no possible way that he'll leave something and say he's gonna come back and not come back. So that's why I'm calling and asking, have you seen him? This would quickly alert Miss Misha. Would immediately contact law enforcement, in which case they would tell her that it has to be at least 24 hours for them to even investigate it as a person missing. But a mother's intuition is strong. And when Derek didn't show up for his meeting, she knew something was terribly wrong. One night, after sleeping, after finding it so very difficult to do so, he was suddenly woken up at around three o'clock in the morning. I, I was sleeping and then something just woke me up like about maybe three o'clock in the morning, something like that. And I got up and I sat up in my bed and I said, something is not right. So I called the police again. I said, please. Intuition was so strong that she'd even call the police even before the 24 hours was up, urging them, no, begging them to please do a wellness check on her son. Only for the police. Tell her politely that, ma'am, while it may be severe to you that your son is missing, you have to wait until at least eight o'clock for that division to even be open. Not only that, it's three o'clock in the morning. Wellness checks don't typically start until around eight o'clock anyways. Now, if you want to report a crime, you can report a crime and we'll send units that way. Otherwise, we can't help you until the morning. A mother's intuition is a mother's intuition. So three o'clock in the morning or not, Miss Misha jumped up and got in her car. I got up out of my bed and I just went driving to different areas where I thought he might be. I went to the studio where he played, you know, would make his music and went around there to the ditches behind the buildings, everywhere to see if I saw him. That's one thing about them Geechee ladies in South Carolina. You can't tell them nothing when they intuition goes off. Shit speed through the rainy streets of South Carolina, even hydroplaning at some points, just skimming and scamming areas that her son may be at. Now, she would start asking people left and right, have you seen my son? Have you seen my son? Can you call the police and report my son? He kicked up enough dust to where the police had to investigate this prematurely. They had to. So ultimately, units would go out to the residents of speaker knockers. And as we all know, what they had discovered at the house, be speaker knockers laying in his garage unconscious. On March 6th of the year 2014, speaker knockers was found dead in his garage at his home in South Carolina. Coroner Gary Watts said that foul play was not suspected. Autopsy was conducted and found no signs of foul play. His death was ruled as natural causes, more specifically, a heart attack. In 2023, his mother said that his cause of death had been widely misrepresented and that it did not involve either drugs nor a heart attack. 95% of the things that they say is not true. My son did not uh, die of any type of drug substance or anything like that. And he did not have a heart attack. Um, but I just, you know, want to clear that up, but that's not what happened. Now, internet conspiracy theorists would make the claims that Speaker Knocker had his car running in his garage while he was sipping activists. It also come up with the theory that Speaker Knockers wasn't alone when it happened, that the people that were with him fled the scene. Now, I know this is a very touchy topic, but it's just now, in the year 2024, that we're finding out the real truth of what happened to Pimp C. So, tell me about Buddy. Buddy, the nigga who killed my cousin, said, look, y'all don't tell, don't say nothing, I'ma play a joke on Pimp. His wife. Bun B. Mainstream media, everybody led us to believe that Pimp C went out from the consumption of codeine. 
but as many YouTubers have covered, most notably 504 Street Stories Unplugged. Go check that out. Pimp C was actually poisoned. It wasn't until somewhat 20 years later when Pimp C's cousin Edgar would come forward and tell this truth. Oh, so, while it may be true that his mother doesn't want to hear that part, I strongly advise her that if she doesn't actually know the way her son went out, if she wants to do a real true due diligence, she should probably keep the possibilities open. I'm not saying that to tell her what she needs to do with her son because it knows that this is a very unfortunate situation. No parent should bury a child. I'm saying it to say that it was foul play involved with Pimp C's homicide. And even the mainstream media was pushing the narrative that Pimp C, his demise, with a cross between codeine and sleep apnea. Just this week, the LA County Coroner's Office ruled the rapper's death accidental and attributed to a combination of a disorder, a sleep disorder called apnea and prescription strength cough syrup. And our guest this morning is Bernard Freeman, known as Bun B. He is one of those who was closest to Pimp C. Good morning and thanks for being here. Now, you. you were one of Chad's best partners, grew up with him. But you're going to be doing a concert tonight. Yes, I am. Um, now, now, this concert is following the release of the information, which says that sleep, apnea, yes. and syrup. And we know that syrup on the streets usually has codeine. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. When you heard that, what, what went through your mind? Well, it, it was sad, but it's, it's, it's a definitely real thing, you know, living in Houston, Texas. Um, being um, a person of, that affiliates with the, the, the common man on the street, we all know that in Houston, Texas. Something that we all know now is not true. But Speaker Knocker didn't just go away. He left behind a major legacy. August the 21st of 2014, our county rapper Kodak Black would release a remix to Speaker Knocker's song Lonely called Off of 14. And in 2016, an unreleased song by an American rapper by the name of Lil Uzi Vert Title Alone Time, the rapper paid tribute to Speaker Knockers. In February of 2016, an American rapper by the name of Denzel Curry paid his tribute to Speaker Knockers in his song, Naughty Head. In August of 2018, with an interview in Double XL, American Seattle rapper Lil Mosey revealed that Speaker Knockers set the groundwork for his production style. During a November 2018 interview with The Fader, American rapper Roddy Rich calls Speaker Knockers one of his biggest inspirations musically. And in November 2019, American rapper Kevin Gates released his song, By My Lonely. And this would actually sample Speaker Knockers' song, Lonely as a homage to the late rapper. Just as recent as February 2022, Los Angeles rapper OGZ released his song titled Appetizer, in which case, he would pay a tribute to Speaker Knockers in the second verse when he says, Speaker Knockers, I'm bumping on that Erica Kane. In 2022, November, rapper T Grizzly called Speaker Knockers' song, Rico Story, one of the best storytelling rap songs of all time. Speaker Knockers was young and ahead of his time, but the sound lives on. You can hear remnants of it in Days Loaf, Lil Dirk, a boogie with a hoodie, coming Chicago artists, even artists out in Atlanta, Georgia. I guess my only question at the end of this is, do we feel like we have a sense of closure on this speaker knocker situation? I mean, his own mom don't want to speak on it, so should we just let it be for what it is? The autopsy report said that it was natural causes and most likely a heart attack. It didn't say it was a heart attack, but it said most likely. Internet conspiracy theorists say that it's a mixture between carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, I don't know which one, mixed with codeine from running his car inside of the garage. But just like how many licks it would take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop, the mysterious death of speaker knockers. The answers? The world may never know. Oh yeah, YouTube family man, that was the story of the mysterious death of speaker knockers. I say it's mysterious because who would have known 20 years later that somebody poisoned Pimp C? We'll keep the possibilities open. Anyways, YouTube family, if y'all like that video, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. I am very aware that since the Julio Fulio situation that I've gained a lot more new subscribers, a lot of more new viewers. Ow. Although I like to entertain y'all with the funny stuff, this is the meat and potatoes of the channel. So make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. If y'all was digging the content, jump in the comment section right now and say RIP to speaker knockers, man. But yeah, YouTube family, y'all already know we're going to sit up there and we're going to stay down 
until we come up. It's simple mathematics at this point, right? But anyway, YouTube family man, as y'all already know, I'm gone, man. I'm pippin' like I'm done one I'ma stop at the store, sell me a onion Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up out, I'm bum